now tuned in to the SD Experience Sports Podcast. Take me back to the time when you were just figuring out what an ACT is, because me as well, I didn't know what an ACT was. Coach Jones and me being, I think, 11th grade in high school before I even heard what that was, because uh, it may just be me, because people who come from where we come from don't see those images. We don't. We don't see the commercials and mm-hmm. we don't know anyone that's taken an ACT because that's not important, quote unquote, in our neighborhoods. So how important was it for you to get that ACT done so you can move on and play at the next level? Man, it was very important once I found out about it because, like you said, we don't normally hear about that where we're coming from. We, we not thinking about we got to take a test just to keep playing basketball, you know? We thought it just, our skills uh, get us there, but it take more than your skills. You got to have that, the knowledge uh, on and off the court. School work, you got to get it done. But when I, when I found out about the ACT, when Coach Jones you know, first was talking to me about it, he was telling me this was maybe my junior year. He was like, go ahead and try to you know work on taking it. So you'll still have a more opportunity to take it again if you don't do as well as you want to do. And you have a lot of people who are not good test takers, put it like that. So you want to start early to get comfortable, you know, in a sense. You want to get used to uh, taking it and study your butt off, man. Just keep studying so you can uh, pass it. Because once you get the the certain uh, grade that you want on it, the certain score you want on it, so you can get to the college level where you want to be, you, you, everything will be a lot smoother then. But like I said, for me, I wasn't bad at taking it. I took it uh, one time, and that's all I needed. I made the score that I needed, and I was happy about it. And so I was able to move past it and just focus on more on basketball after that. Kids, if you're out there listening, make sure you do what's necessary in the classroom because you can't get around that ACT or that – SAT, I mean, clearinghouse, all of those things, they have to be done. There's Mm -hmm. no way you can play at the level you want to play on without getting it taken care of. And how many guys do you know, bro, who have the skill set, who have the potential to play at a high level, but they never played because they didn't take it serious in the classroom. They was class clowns or they were skipping or they were sitting in the Mm -hmm. back of the class sleep. And I got stories for days about guys like that, man. But you were one of the ones who figured out what he wanted exactly. to do. Man, take me to your uh, senior year and your last game. Walk me through that moment. Who were you playing? How did it end? And what are your thoughts on it? Oh, last game. Barb High School. I can never forget. Barb High School. Senior year. Close game. <laughs> Shouldn't have been close, but it was a close game. Shout out to Barb, man. It was, it was a hard fall game. Last couple seconds, man. I'll never forget the guy. The guy shoots it from half court and make it at the buzzer. But it wasn't at the buzzer. I was on the court. You was on the court. We all see the same thing. The guy is actually taking another dribble when the buzzer goes off and then shoots it. But we're at bar. So once he the ball goes in the basket, all the fans rush the court. And not too many people saw the referees. Me, as soon as he shot it, I'm looking at the referees because I'm thinking, I'm saying, no, it's not good. I see one referee say it's not good. The other referee raised his hands and says it's good. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God. I know they didn't just count this. The referees just leave leave the court. They leave the court, and the game is over. We all in the locker room shedding tears, just crying, man. I'm I'm sad. So we get back to school. Just so happened, the camera crew, the the news, everybody, they have the perfect angle, whereas you can see the guy with the ball, and you see the shot clock. It shows they put it in slow motion. The clock went off, and he takes another dribble and then lunches and shoots it. It made ESPN and everything. But in high school, you know, at the time, you, you couldn't go back and watch it. You didn't have instant replay. 
So to go out like that, it, it, it hurt, but it, it drives me more to push to try to get a championship. As you were saying, I was on that court as well, and I saw the same thing. It was after the clock, but we never hang our hat on that. We should never been put in that position anyway. We should have taken care of our business. Mm-hmm. So I mimic your statements. Uh, shout out to Bob, man. They got it done. Um, so you're a senior at the time. Let's talk about college offers. What were some of the offers that you got coming out and your mentality of playing on the next level for college? Uh, I had a bunch of junior colleges starting out uh, my senior year. I had one D1 offer, Division One offer, Northwestern, that I ended up choosing. But before that, I, like I said, I go on a visit. I go do the little visit to see. I had my mindset on junior college. I had my mindset on junior college. I'm telling my moms, man, I want to do junior college because I know I play good in junior college. A lot of big schools look at that, and I can go to a bigger school at the at the time of D1. Moms had it said in her mind, like, no, God didn't tell me that's where you're going to be. He's telling me that Northwestern is the place for you. I don't know, man. I ain't, I ain't hear that. He ain't tell me that. I ain't <laughs> I hear that, mama. Like you he heard that. He wasn't talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, moms, they always right. That's the that's the saying back home. Mom always knows. She always knows. But she talked me into it. She talked to me into it. Uh, so that was the decision. I told Coach Jones that's what I wanted to do. So he set up everything to... Uh, have everyone there to for the signing and everything. All my family came out. The team, all everybody was with me for the signing. It was a happy moment. Tears of joy at the time. It was a lot of tears, but it was a lot of excitement, a lot of joy. Because, like I said, it was big in my family for me to even go to college. And, and not alone just go to college, but I get a full ride, full free ride, man, on the scholarship. It was big, big thing. So for any of those youngsters out there watching, uh, what are your thoughts on kids who are overlooking mid-majors? And what makes you think they want to go to a powerhouse program versus taking a Division One offer out of the gate and crafting, their, you know, getting their game right? What are your thoughts on guys who want to overlook those mid-majors out there? First, I want to say you have to think about when you're going to the bigger schools, if you're not the top one recruit that they had, it's not all the time you're going to get that playing time starting out as a as a freshman in college at a big school. Not always. You have to think about all the little details, not only just on the court, but your education as well. What you want to major in. If this school is good, it, it, it has a great major, uh, the different classes for the, this major, you know. You want to look into all those the, those things because not all the time, like I said, you're going to be able to get that playing time starting out. You might lose two years. But I was fortunate enough to actually start out uh, at Northwestern. Coach Coach Mike, shout out to Coach Mike McConaughey, Coach Moore, Coach Sless. They all saw, uh, like, the same thing Coach Jones saw. They saw the potential. I was able to start out starting as, as a freshman, you know. I redshirted my first year. I read shirt my first year so to work on developing, getting my body right physically, and to work on mentally, toughness, you know. But it all, Coach, Coach Mike saw it, saw the potential, like I said, and he was another one that will push you and will be on you because he see great things in you. You had an issue. Uh, you just completed your red shirt year. Now you're on the court. Talk about your mentality then, taking a whole year off, getting yourself prepared physically as well as mentally. What does the mental aspect look like for a guy who's red-shirted and coming to his own? Uh, like, you haven't played yet, so you don't know. You don't really have a feel of playing in a college basketball game. Of course, you're playing against your teammates, things like that, but you don't have the the real feel of playing. So that's when the mental part set in. That first game, you know, you nervous, everything, <laughs> jump, stomach, <laughs> everywhere, heart dropping, everything. So you try, you try your best to 
calm yourself down. You got your teammates talking to you, asking if you're ready. You got to be ready because once them lights come on, it's on you. It's up to you. But with me, my mentality, you know, I'm just out there. I play hard. That's my thing. If you play hard, you know, some some of the mistakes will get overlooked because you have to you you're playing hard. You can you can uh, drown out some of those mistakes. But my my first game, I can remember, I was I was nervous, you know. But once that ball went up in the air, it was on. All that went away, and it's just me and my team, man. I can't count how many times I was nervous on a basketball court to start off. Look, I think those are just signs of being eager and being ready. When you get those butterflies as a player. That lets you know you're in tune and you're involved. And I always had those right before that tip-off. But like mm-hmm. you said, as soon as that point guard gets the ball or I get the ball and walk it up the floor, well, it's game time. I forgot all about that. Game time. So you've won, won numerous awards during your NSU career, um, one of which was the shot blocking championship. And you were the number one shot blocker in the entire country in 2011. Tell me what that felt like and Walk me through that moment in time for you. Oh, man, it's one of one of first many awards, but to lead the 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 nation in shot blocking and all the colleges everywhere to be number one in something is a very big accomplishment. Like you beat out thousands of players for this award. And I took that to heart, you know, it, it was very big to me because this was what I was good at. And I showed that I was really great at it. And to, excuse me, and to hear them call my name and things like that when it comes down to the shot blocking, breaking records at my school, all those things, I really took that to heart because this is what I really wanted. And I, I proved that I really wanted it. I went out and I took everything I had. I, I This wasn't given to me. I had to make sure I go get that. And to see my name in the rafters, you know, in my 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 home school, my my hometowns, the things like that, it was a very big thing deal to me. And like I said, once again, it was tears of enjoyment, and I can remember just getting a shot blocking plaque. I kissed it. I, I, that's something I hold dear. <laughs> I never let go. This is in the record books. This in the books, and this in my history. A lot of people don't know you would have won it back to back if it wasn't for a guy named Anthony Davis, which you came second to that following season. But we're not gonna say nothing about that. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that's future Hall of Fame right there, man. That was a future Hall of Famer. Is like uh, if I lose it, the 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 rec- that to anybody who else better than Anthony Davis. Everybody see him in the NBA. Now on my, my team, the Lakers. <laughs> I went Let's from, talk about from it. Let's talk about those Lakers. Like it to a fan. 